a lot of times, you know, keep it simple is the, is, the, is the answer. We're doing the opposite. We're actually trying to go to be the most comprehensive solution so we can actually solve the biggest problems. And the biggest problems are all the disconnected people and parties that have all their independent agendas. I'm excited to continue my conversation with you, Matt. Um, we heard in our first part around your construction management platform, 10 years you've built this. Obviously over this time, there's a few insights you've gained. Um, I, I'm kind of curious, how did you get to where you are today? You can even go beyond be, before the 10 years. Um, tell me, what's your story? Uh, the story. Um, the story as, it, as it's typically told is uh, used to build software web applications and um, got approached by some uh, you know, internal network and they said, hey, can you help us solve this problem in construction? And it sounded really appealing. And so I said, yeah, I'd love to try it, teach me. And, and so they, they, they taught me what it meant to build a hospital in California. They taught me all the regulations. And I, I set off to learn more like what, um, what are the emerging trends in software? What are concepts in construction? Um, those were building information modeling at the time, uh, which was gonna be big and still, working to be big and uh, IPD integrated project delivery concepts of shared risk and reward and construction with teams work towards a common goal and don't battle each other for liabilities type things. Um, and so learning all this stuff, you see like there's some really cool technology out there. You see how there was like this really neat 3d emerging concepts and how all these really skilled people have problems connecting with each other. And so um, set out to build inertia to solve these problems first by that, you know, single click on something to access your information, click on a wall to know about that wall click on a mechanical system to know about that system. And um, in learning those trends, we, we set out to build inertia to be like a complete solution that connects all these different teams, which, which is an ambitious goal because um, a lot of times, you know, keep it simple is the, is, the, is the answer. We're doing the opposite. We're actually trying to go to be the most comprehensive solution so we can actually solve the biggest problems. And the biggest problems are all the disconnected people and parties that have all their independent agendas but you can solve those problems with a truly connected platform that understands their unique points and connects it organically, naturally. We don't ask them to change, we just ask them to use this tool. This tool lets them do their thing. And so um, in, in taking that approach, we, we've, we've just, we got to learn, like I got to learn. You got to see the problem from your user's perspective. And you got to like walk the job site and see like, hey, I'm clicking this button. This button doesn't go fast enough and that, it, you're making me, you know, it makes me sad. It makes me frustrated. It makes me this, that, the other thing. And so uh, you get to learn like what matters to the teams and, and how all that stuff goes. And um, anyway, so that was the journey was we, we set out to build a, a comprehensive platform connected to interactive maps that solves bigger problems in construction. And over the years, you just learn like um, agility matters in software. Um, a lot of times these users will come up with great questions and great like features that uh, as long as they're sort of universally applicable, we always try to put them in. Uh, we've been told about like some legacy tools that had existed in, in construction that didn't adapt when people were asking them to and didn't innovate. They just sort of stayed put, they, they stayed with what was working and they just kept trying to grow with what they had. And our users' expectations were rising and they wanted more or faster or better or just different or who knows what. And so one of the initial things we set out to do was to just, you know, maintain agility, like take the feedback. If it's really valuable to put it to the top of the roadmap, get that feature out. And, and we've had a lot of success in um, identifying what are actually valuable requests to our users and incorporating them in a way that's universally applicable to our platform and to construction in general. And so I would say um, agility was a big one. Um, another concept was um, relationships. Uh, I mentioned before, like you'll get projects that'll run three, four five years. And, um, What's neat about that is you get to know the people on these teams that you're working with and you form bonds and friendships. And, you know, there's times that you're going to be um, wildly successful and your tool is kicking butt and they just love it. And there's going to be times where it totally crashes and bombs and everyone's frustrated and you don't even want to show up on that job site because everyone's just like, like, hey, I lost this information. Press save. It didn't save. And it was an hour's worth of work. And, and I've, I've faced those meetings, too. Um, but through relationships, through showing up all the time and through knowing that you're going to get through that problem. Uh, make up for it. Um, just get get it done. Like understand. Like people learn to not just trust your application, but trust you know the team, the people that are behind that application. And um, that that's been a really important one for me too. So my biggest sort of lessons for success: uh, agility in the software and, and relationships with the uh, with your teams. 
powerful insights to to have learned o- over the years. We were talking earlier, another maybe something you might have done differently is was on the funding side, when you began, it was bootstrapped. You, you knew how to build software and you built it, but then trying to grow from that. So tell me a bit more, dive into like, why uh, would you have, how do you view funding now? And is there anything that you would um, advise another individual who's, who's looking to grow or get funding? Yeah, it's interesting. So we're, we're also, we're in business to business and, and we compete against some really well-funded organizations. Um, we're, you know, we like to see ourselves, you know, biased, of course, but on par with some of the biggest guys out there. And um, um, we do get co-deployed alongside of them. And we even win over business uh, more often than not from, from some of the bigger, bigger companies. Um, one of the advantages of not funding was there was no pressure to earn or grow early. And I'm not going to pretend that we set out to be this this uh, rock star company when we got started. It was more like, hey, can can I can can we do this? You know, can I solve this problem? Can you just click on the thing and make it go? And it slowly gained traction. And for years, we didn't have even a marketing site. Like it was just word of mouth. And you went to our website, and it was just a client login. You wouldn't know anything about anything that we were doing. You weren't actively using our our platform. And um, through the years it gave us time to like understand teams and problems. And the focus wasn't, you know, financially driven. It was solution driven, problem solving and relationship building and just going and proving something. Um, and so that was nice. Like I'm, I'm told by a lot of people that get early funding, there's a lot more pressure to succeed a lot more rapidly. And uh, you're making, you, your decisions are driven differently by, by different motives. Um, and we didn't have that problem early, which I think was lucky. Uh, we got to really understand the problem, take time to, I think solve it. Um, but there's also a con, if you're not making any money, you're not going to survive. Uh, so you got to make enough money to survive. And, uh, we had a lot of projects. We were successful. We we're doing good, but we weren't huge. And you see a bunch of other companies that, um, they have nice and good tools, sometimes even great tools. Um, but they were funded well and they just exploded. And now all of a sudden they're, they're knocking on doors. They're they're They have a budget to wine and dine your customers. And, uh, pick their brains to learn about what we're doing and, and little things like that. And like, Hey, you know what? They're onto something. Uh, maybe if we get some backing too, we can grow a little faster. And uh, we eventually decided to go that route also. You mentioned earlier team uh, also is very important and having that to be able to, to grow. Um, what are some lessons learned of, of building the team where you are today? Anything that you can share? Yeah, it's, that's critical. Um, Team, man, we've had some really long time developers who've been really committed to our efforts. So uh, early going, uh, you know, budget's always an issue when you're getting started, especially if you bootstrap. So you, you cut corners where you can. And one of the ways you can cut corners is uh, overseas development teams. And so I've established some relationships with different overseas developers that we've had for years. And we've had different teams in different regions and zones. And we've had U.S. based and you, you name it. We've done it all. And um What's neat about this is we actually form, you form like a bond with your team and your team stays committed to the problems. And like, you can throw really challenging, you, you could go into some really challenging scenarios with some really complex problems and everyone's just like committed to getting it done. Like the, the, the bond is there, like, okay, we'll push through this, uh, you know, um, we'll find the answer. We'll find a way to commit it. We'll put in the extra hours. We'll work together. You know, everyone, I'll stay up through midnight. They'll stay up through their midnight and everyone's, it's just, it's just nonstop effort to get things done. And through that, you form really strong bonds. And, and I'm really happy with the team that has been committed to getting us where we are over all the years. And then since then, it's been a really neat learning lesson for me too, to build up a, a US-based team with seasoned you know, pros from other companies and other industries even uh, that have been able to come in and form like what our inertia team is now. And um, it's neat to get you know someone who really knows uh, finance to help on the finance side and someone who really knows marketing to help on the marketing side and someone who's run like a big development organization before. And it's not like this uh, spaghetti code b- uh, bootstrap approach. It's like a really structured uh, process. And, and you learn all these lessons from everybody and, and you try to give people the, the power and the freedom to do what they do well and then learn from them. And so I think, um, I don't know, I don't know if I'm answering this right, but uh, it's, it's, choosing the right people, having the right culture, having like common attitudes, like where problems are fun to solve and you want to take them on. And when you, when you can, when you can gel there, um, it, it's really neat to like 
build a team that's all aligned and working towards common goals. Come, definitely, I can see them that comes together. How big is the team today? Uh, we are up to, I believe, it's thirty-one. 30. Yeah, gotcha. And and in those latest ones you've been looking for, what what qualities do you look for when you're hiring someone? Interesting. Um, you know, I think attitude is a is a big one. Like it, it's hard to say skills. I mean, obviously, you want people to be skilled at what you're asking them to come in and do. But if you don't align, um, you know, culturally, or or if, if you can't have the same like fun or enthusiasm, or like you just want to you just want to go and do it, you know, uh, you got to get people that have that common sort of attitude. Um, you want to balance a little too. Like uh, we have we have um, me personally, I like to balance like someone. If I'm incredibly optimistic, uh, and I think we can accomplish anything we set out to do, and, and we'll always fight off a little more than we should, and we'll find a way to get there. And it's nice to have a, a counterweight to that sometimes too. So I do try to make sure we have teams and that our team will say, Hey, check is maybe we shouldn't do that or a fresh approach or a different attitude. Or so I think a balance to, to the team building is good. Um, but also that same like enthusiasm, the, 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 the concept that, okay, let's set a plan. Let's get this done and let's go do it. And we all complement each other. Well, like support each other, get along with each other, all that. Switching, um, uh, areas now looking at clients. So one thing is, okay, build the team. The other is <laughs> acquiring uh, a client's going from the first one to then a few and then going beyond that. What tactics have you found that have worked to be able to scale your clientele and those using your platform? Yeah, that's a good question. So our background was we spent just a lot of time in the job site trailer working with the teams and if there was like a, a pain point, like, oh, I, I can, we can whip this up. My team can code something in like a month to solve this problem. And so that was that agility concept. Let's boom, put our heads down, get it done, put it in front of them and say, hey, if you think this will work. And then they said, yeah, we think it'll work. And will you pay us for it? And then, okay, we'll pay you for it. And so they did. And um, that has worked nicely for us initially. Um, and what we've been able to do is establish relationships with those projects that have grown sort of organically and, and spread sort of organically because now you get this project team that refers you to the other projects and we don't have marketing. Like I said, we didn't have all these other ways for people to learn about us. So it was the people who used us referred us out to their other projects and teams or took us with them when those projects ended. Um, and so our approach up until recently has been that it's, it's through our success on existing projects with existing clients to push us and, and grow organically. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Uh, which has been kind of, it's been great. And you, people know you trust you and know that you'll come through and all that kind of stuff. Um, but now we're trying to be a, uh, you know, a more proper organization and, and we brought in some seasoned uh, you know, people who know how to run uh, a sales organization and um, they're setting us up. We're having proper marketing campaigns and I'm not really, I, I'm not seasoned in this stuff. Anymore, so I'm not gonna pretend like I'm an expert in any of it. I, I, I'm, I'm lucky to be surrounded by really talented experts now. And uh, they're, they're pursuing a more traditional approach to getting the word out, uh, getting the message out, connecting with the right target audience and, and getting some exposure. Yeah. What, um, what challenges do you see coming up for yourself you're going to need to face um, in going into 2021 in order to address? You know, uh, so it's interesting when you say challenges, there's a couple, there's traditional business challenges, but then COVID, which is for, for everybody. Um, travel was a big thing for us, like getting out and spending time with people, showing them software in person, like connecting uh, on the human, on, uh, in person, in, in a human way. Uh, it was always really um advantageous and and the way i've liked to do things and i think the way most of our people in this industry like to do things um so challenge one challenge is just the the, the new norm of um doing things through zoom doing things remotely um we will succeed there we'll, we can achieve it the way everyone else is working through it we're, we're all going to find a way to make that go um but adapting to that the new norm uh, so that's one of the challenges but that's for everybody um a specific challenge uh for us is icd so we have a, a pretty comprehensive platform for construction management, uh, but ICDs really is the future. And so ICDs is what connects all of our different tools and concepts and makes it proactive, predictive, and fun and cool. And just, it, it's, a, it's a really great solution. Um, but what'll be really neat about it and also challenging is we're going to start to offer these ICDs to our other solution providers out there to be like an underlying um, technology in their platforms so that they can start to connect the dots uh, of all their records through our interactive location-based maps. And so I, I see some uh, initial challenges are um, 
getting the licensing agreements going, finding the best ways to integrate our tool with all these other really robust tools and uh, finding ways to make it, you know, mutually beneficial and, and a win-win situation for everybody. So that's, that's what we'll be setting out to do this next year. And um, it'll be, it'll be a fun challenge to, to tackle. Where do you go for insight and knowledge and, and um, to, to learn any books, audiobooks, podcasts, blogs that uh, you can recommend? You know what? Um, my, my wife does all of the reading and audiobooks, and she, she goes through so many and then she refers all the best ones to me. Uh, and then I try to listen to them when I can. I'm not nearly as um, uh, proactive as she is at this stuff. Um, one of the, one of the fun ones that, helped and it's inspirational to me and it's a simple one it's a fast read and it's probably why it worked for me uh tools of the titans um it, it's a really neat uh, collection of stories of uh, it's a couple hundred um you would call them successful people across uh, different industries and um uh fair ferris tony ferris, ferris is his name. and um it's just neat because it's a it's it's concepts in health and motivation it's concepts in business success it's concepts in uh, just across the board. And um, I don't know, that one was one that I enjoyed very much. Um, Harvard Business Review sends out some neat stuff too. Like you just get cool little lessons. There's, there's, it's interesting to, for me to read all these takes and then try to apply them in real life. That's the, uh, the there's a lot of, there's great theory out there and you try to introduce it in real life. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Or you realize you're not connecting the dots, like the things that you thought were going to work don't quite work. Um, but you find a way when you learn agility, that's where you go back to agility. You know, you try something, if it works great, you stick or you adapt it, or if it's not working, you just got to pull it and find what it will. Last question for you, Matt, what kind of tech innovations do you predict we will see in the near term and next year or so and long term, next five, 10 years? I will only stick to what I think I know is the construction side. And so uh, I like to say our tech is useful now and embraces emerging technology. There is some really cool tech coming down the pipeline in construction. that's not quite there yet, but it will be soon and it will be game changing. One of the neat ones I saw was um, robotics, like just the, the automation of assemblies. It's, it's really neat. Um, I saw this, uh, it, this ENR convention they have this dog, I think it was, uh, Boston Electronics, they make, they make this robotic dog that can walk through a construction site and with its four legs, it can properly navigate all the obstacles and maintain a perfect level balance. And then they could put 3D cameras on it and a bunch of sensors on it. Boston and me- these- Mechanics, I think Boston Dynamics. Boston Dynamics, Dynamics. that's yeah. it. Thank you. Sorry. Thank you. Um, really, really neat. And so one of the GCs piloted this tech and it looks like it's going to work. It's a little expensive. It's hard to reproduce. They're not quite there yet, but it's really cool it's probably it's it's going to catch on and it will be the way of things in the future and so i think um seeing robotics automation 3d printing i think that's going to be some game changing stuff absolutely and uh hopefully we can partner with those those firms and help help make them successful too have you seen a company using ai machine learning or other technology to transform the way we live work and do business go to uptechreport.com and let us know